Marina com Semana Cine Especial. Batman Eternamente é o terceiro filme da série. Michael Keaton, que foi o Homem-Morcego nos dois primeiros, foi substituído por Val Kilmer. Outra mudança é Tim Burton, que trocou a direção pela produção executiva e Joshua Schumacher, de Um Dia de Fúria, o cliente, ficou com a direção. Com a troca, esse novo Batman ficou menos sombrio e ganhou muito mais ação. Outra novidade é que resolveram ressuscitar o Robin, feito pelo Chris O'Donnell, o menino do perfume de mulher. A namorada é Nicole Kidman e, dessa vez, dois vilões. Tommy Lee Jones faz o Duas Caras e Jim Carrey, que desbancou Robin Williams para esse papel, faz o Charada. Chris Connery, da MTV Americana, entrevistou os astros e é isso que você vai ver agora. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black We have a theme, a theme of duality. Uh, Batman is two people. Look. Cheers. There's Bruce Wayne, he's different than Batman. Robin, towards the end of the film, you know, takes on this kind of dual lifestyle. What's a good sidekick name? How about Dick Grayson, college student? He's suddenly assuming this superhero uh, lifestyle. Harvey's definitely two characters. Are you gonna kill me? Maybe, maybe not. You can say we're two lions on the subject. The nature of his madness is such that he used to be a, a district attorney who would uh, restore order to uh, uh, you know, a criminal society. Let's see what justice has in store for you. He's now become obsessed with chaos and decided that that is in fact the true uh, justice. Edward Nygma is like a, you know, a guy who basically loses his identity. By the way, I've seen your mind, freak. He has completely lost himself. And, and the only way that he can shine is through all the wild lights and the, and the, and the hair and the, and the, you know, diamond encrusted suit. Does anybody else feel like a fried egg? Everyone in the film has a dual personality, and so I really wanted to make sure that Chase, even though she didn't put on a, a, a suit she or a villain costume, she had her other side. I'm Chase Meridian. I read your work. Insightful. Naive, but insightful. I'm by day this sort of wonderful psychologist. Then at night, I have my dark side, which is to be chasing Batman wherever he goes and asking him to come to my bedroom. Night, please. Now we've established a firm grasp of the obvious. Let's have a car chase and a big fight and learn if good is stronger than evil. That scene of you in the Batcave when you're blowing things up, that looks like you had the best time imaginable. It was so cool. It was so cool. <laughs> you could do maybe two takes a day. You know, so, uh, you know, after it was done, it was like, you know, I, I want to do it again. And they said, well, well you can't. Because <laughs> it takes four hours to set up. When he blows up the bat cave, that's all him. That's him and the explosives. There were no stunt people on this film. We put them on the credits just because of the insurance thing. Let's start this party with a bat! I did some of Tommy's stunts. Did you work out big time for this movie, or are you just naturally that pumped? I'm just naturally that pumped. I worked out pretty darn hard. I, I worked out, you know, just this side of Sylvester Stallone. Well, you know, the, the, the costume is fake. Oh, my back <laughs> Do you wear a cup in this movie? I don't. I don't wear a cup, actually. Robin just has a very large codpiece. Well, gosh. I kicked him in the groin constantly. He must have the hardest nuts on earth. Very well-developed costume. Not just the muscles. With his background in costume design, Schumacher made sure the bat suit had some new accessories. I'm famous for putting nipples on the bat suit. There's nipples on this. There's nipples. <laughs> and then he came by and pointed. So you're kidding. God. This is the first suit that they put them on, and it was hysterical. So, of course, this is the 90s. Where do you stand on the nipples on the bat suit question? Hey, if I had my way, it'd be totally anatomically correct. You know what I mean? That's right. Batman, Capes Crusader, raging. I would love to have had, been able to put on one of those suits. 
Like gym suit. Like the jacket? It keeps me safe when I'm jogging at night. I was really jealous of that suit. They start, like, wheeling out these costumes for you to check out. Yeah, and I went immediately to the sock drawer. <laughs> and I said, I need a big pair of tube socks. <laughs> What do you think the enduring appeal of the Batman story is? I think Batman is, uh, you know, he's a real person. There is something about uh, that he's a man. It's not superhuman powers. He just kind of bought all this stuff, you know what I mean? So maybe people think if he made a lot of money, like maybe, you know, Bill Gates at Microsoft, like, yeah, I could, like, make a Wayne Manor, you know? I think we're fascinated with Batman because he's the perfect 11-year-old boy. His black rubber suit. Bats is another thing that people are fascinated with. This guy's cool, his suit is all perfect, he's got all those little gadgets. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> I'm obsessed with black rubber suit. When we return, we'll hang from the rafters with Batman's new sidekick, and we'll meet the man beneath the mask. I will help you solve the greatest riddle of all, the mother of all. Val Kilmer has great legs. Bastard. No, he was a good guy. He is a very stunning hero screen presence. Val Kilmer's good looks and dry wit have helped him work steadily in movies for more than a decade. In comedies? I didn't want you guys to think I was stuck. You know, no fun. All brain, no penis. Dramas? They are not my people. And most memorably, as Jim Morrison in The Doors. I'm the Lizard King! I can do anything! So when Michael Keaton chose to relinquish the role he'd played in the first two Bat films... Maybe you should retire. Kilmer got the call at a somewhat ironic location. It was a cave full of bats in South Africa. The agent said, if Michael doesn't want to do Batman again, do you want to? I said, sure. How is your Batman different from the last one? The ears are longer. Pointy ears and a taste for hard black rubber only hint at the weirdo behind the mask. Well, let's just say I could write a hell of a paper on a grown man who dresses like a flying rodent. Bats aren't rodents, Dr. Meridian. Bruce Wayne is not exactly sane. He's hustled an entire town to think that it's okay for him to dress as a bat. <laughs> Yeah, he's not stopping for those red lights in the middle of the night. He's flying all around. He's getting mad at people. 120 rooms, one helper. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through. Very strange, strange guy. <laughs> no, he could do anything he wants. This is what he does. characters that I've played that have been heroic have all been kind of odd. You're so drunk you can't hit nothing. In fact, you're probably seeing double. I have two guns, one for each of you. Doc Holliday does heroic things, but he's extremely demented. You've played a hero and you've played a villain in films of this sort of size in a sense. I mean, you go back to Top Gun, you're playing the bad guy. Is it, is it? I never liked that when people say that. You figured it out yet? What's that? Who's the best pilot? He wasn't. He was a good pilot. Poor guy. Where is he now? There's something amazing about Batman. Not being able to see the whole package. Innuendo. Batman has tangled with women before. Some good. Vicky Vale. Some really, really good. You can't know to a girl like me. Now he comes under the more than professional scrutiny of Dr. Chase Meridian. You called me here for this. The bat signal is not a beeper. Well, I wish I could say that my interest in you was purely professional. Are you trying to get under my cape, Doctor? It was the reason why I actually wanted to do the movie, was because of that scene. 
and the way in which she blatantly throws herself at him. I'll bring the wine. Or do I need skin tight vinyl and a whip? But I never kissed Nicole. That's not me. Because it's Tom. But where Chase sees a lover, newly orphaned Dick Grayson sees a fighter and so tries to sign on with Batman as a crime-busting sidekick named Robin. Help me. All right, train me. Let me be your partner. Al, hang this next to the bat suit, where it belongs. How is this Robin different? This Robin is, uh, he's a little tougher. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely a different image than the kind of G-Golly image that we all have of him. Why does he resent Batman so much? He blames Batman for his family's death because he says if Batman would have been, would have showed up at the circus. So, unless the bat is delivered up to us post haste, we're off on a proverbial killing spree. Two-Face would have been able to go after him like he wanted to and his parents never would have been killed in the process. And yet he finds himself drawn to Batman because of this revenge feeling he has. Can't promise I won't kill Harvey. Initially he realizes that Batman, you know, that can help him get to Two-Face, but then he, uh, yeah, he, he definitely kind of likes the whole superhero kind of lifestyle. What do you suggest, Alfred? By sea? Or by air? Why not both? Who's your tailor? Well, there's that scene where you're sort of saying, I want a name. Bat Boy, Nightwing. I don't know, what do you think? What's a good sidekick name? But Batman's very resistant to the idea. We're totally out of control. You're gonna get yourself killed. He's trying to protect me, but I'm young and naive. And wherever Batman goes, I'm gonna be right beside him. And you see him as a kind of mentor, I suppose, eventually. In a sense, your role in Scent of a Woman also had the same sort of mentor. Come on, what are you, some kind of chicken sticks a job description on me? No, Charlie wanted nothing to do with, with Colonel Slade. Sorry. Don't be sorry. How would you know? Watching MTV all your life. I was just trying to get out of there. And this guy wants everything to do on some level with yeah, Batman. Yeah, exactly. Not just a friend. A partner. How come you don't have a belt with all that cool stuff? I've got a belt there. You just didn't check it out. Robin has some gadgets on there. He just is not fully brought up to speed on how to work everything. Well, you know, there was some talk that you'd kind of done a job on the Batman. Put it up on a curve. Is this right? Or I kind of the... nudged it in a little bit. I don't know. The brakes weren't really tight. I got to get new brake pads on that thing. You forgot the part where you kissed the girl. And you get to kiss somebody in this movie. I don't remember Robin getting much uh, play. Or... Yeah, he really wants to stick his tongue down someone's throat at, at some point, if possible. I think he needs to get a little bit more play in some of these things. We're going to have to work on that for the next one. Stay tuned. We've got Jim Carrey, uninhibited. Somebody play with me. Uncut. Uh, uh, pardon me. Unhinged. <laughs> and unconscious. When trouble was afoot. When we return. Contestants. <laughs> the Riddler. Whenever there was a line, you needed a line or needed something clever or witty to say. It's like, where's Jim? Where's Jim? <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> it was a lot of fun watching Jim enjoy it as much as we were. One of the most amazing human beings I've ever worked with in my life. And you felt free throughout to be able to make up lines on the set to tell Joel I'm going to try something. Yeah, else. you know, it was it was a surprise because it was my first huge budget. And and uh, I thought, well, here's the time where they sit on you and they go, no way, mister. You know what's writing on this? And turning to Roger Crawford on you. Cut off, cut off! Your are paid for, your are paid for. You know, and uh, you know, so I, I, uh, I went to Joel, I said, I have ideas. He said, great. Let's face it, villain is the gig in these movies, right? I mean, hero is, hero is fun, but villain is really where it's at, yeah? That's what everybody says. <laughs> but ultimately, you do look at the hero and you go, why was he cast in that role and I was cast in this role? Maybe cosmically they know something about me that I don't even know myself yet. Your interest was good. This was bad. Difference? Showmanship. I think.
think that uh, working with Jim brought out some of Tommy's humor. And um, it was exciting to watch both of them together in a scene because they're both great scene stealers. Very few people are both a summer and a winter, but you pull it off nicely. What's the point there, boy? I was dealing with Tommy Lee Jones, man. I, I was scared out of my mind. Has anybody ever told you you have a serious impulse control problem? Let's cut to Tommy during this. Hey, listen, fellas. Um, that's very distracting. I can tell you how it went. Of course! Stan Plead? Creighton? That kind of thing. Makes you feel real warm inside. Anything else? People come up to you and they say, he'll kill you, man. He'll kill you with his bare hands. Get your line. Okay, I'll get the point. Blast him! For me, the Riddler was spinning a cane, you know, basically trying to think that, you know, trying to get my psychology in the right place, which was basically a sycophant, you know, the guy that, that uh, love, you know, loves what somebody else has so bad, so much, that he loses himself completely. Bruce Wayne, in the flesh. He's gonna need that hand back. Yes. He comes from kind of a place that we all can, you know, we can all go there. You know, if we kind of lose ourselves or us, our self-esteem and start going, yeah, hey, covet thy neighbor's goods. I'm coming, my sweet. <laughs> Batman will come for me. Batman? Batman, you say? Coming for you? <laughs> I'm counting on it. So what would happen if your character meets Bruce Wayne in an alley with nobody else around? Would you be able to kick his butt? No, I wouldn't. But I'd wait till he wasn't looking and pick up a rock. That's my character. Carrie took home a reported $5 million to play the Riddler. Was that over the top? A far cry from the struggling days of his early L.A. years. It was that, you know, that time in my life where, you know, auditions meant nothing. I think I, I you know, I, I really... Uh, for about two years of my life, I wore my clothes inside out and going to auditions that way and having people say, you know, doesn't he know that he's ruining himself? I'm ready to go in, coach. Just give me a chance. Ace Ventura Pet Detective gave Carrie the chance he craved and an early screening tipped him off to the superstardom that lay just ahead. When I saw Ace, hilarious because I, I went to Atlanta to that theater and you know it was the first time you know I started realizing that this thing was getting kind of big oh why do you that I went into the theater and I heard people on walkie-talkies going the eagle has landed the eagle has landed like that and I went who's the eagle man and they went you're the eagle and I went oh ka you know and uh and, you know, I immediately laid an egg. Okay. The success of The Mask left Carrie just as addled. The Mask is a whole different animal. It's like, uh, you know, uh, it's just uh, a whole different thing. It's a whole different uh, world. It's a whole different uh, realm. It's a whole different uh, quandary. It's a whole different uh, rigmarole. You are one pathetic loser. <laughs> Dumb and Dumber's triumph had some critics detecting a nationwide lurch toward cultural stupidity. Oh, geez, look at the butt on that. Yeah. He must work out. Blame little old me for the dumbness in the country. <laughs> I just want to give people relief. That's all I want. You know, you educate the man. Next for Carrie, more comedy, certainly. <laughs> but a dramatic role as well. Some director with, with true talent and foresight will look at me and realize that I'm not just laugh and giggle. I'm pain, too. And hopefully some much-needed downtime. This year of my life is so exciting. Yet, yet... It's exhausting. 
at the same time. So it, it really is like the analogy would be like it's 1 a.m. all the time. You have to get up at 6 in the morning. And, you know, just before you're about to shut off the TV, the announcer comes on and says that the late night movie is Ghost and Mr. Chicken with Don Knotts. <laughs> And you have to stay up and watch every frame. And that's what my life is like. I can't miss anything. Is there going to be a Riddler action figure? Do you get to approve it or anything? There's all kinds of stuff. I think there's like, there's Riddler, you know, medical equipment. There's Riddler uh, gynecological equipment. You know, big question mark that opens up. Woo! So what is the exhausting part for? Uh, I think I'm masturbating too much. I think I'm, I need to leave myself alone. Just curl up, take a nap. Could I? Yeah. Okay.